process control is at the heart of automation. And there are process controllers, automation uh, examples all around us. Let's just talk about a couple. First one might be in a home where you're familiar with a thermostat that is going to try to maintain the home at a particular temperature. Now for every control system, you're going to have three elements. The first one is a sensor. In this case, you're going to try to measure the temperature of the home. The next one is going to be an actuator. Now with an actuator, you're going to be able to adjust that quantity of interest, the one that you're going to be measuring. And then you have a controller as well, the one that decides when to turn on or off the actuator. So in this case, the actuator might be a furnace, something, let's say, in the uh, home that provides heat, additional heat when, uh, when needed. Okay, and we have the sensor. Uh, maybe we have a thermostat in the home. I'm just going to write that as a temperature transmitter. That's going to send a signal to the temperature controller and the temperature controller is going to have a set point, maybe 68 degrees in Fahrenheit in the winter, and that temperature controller is going to send a signal to the actuator, or in this case, the heater. Okay, let's talk about um, also some potential disturbances for this that will drive us away from our set point. So we're trying to maintain, for example, a temperature set point, Okay, and the, uh, you know, during the nighttime, maybe there's a disturbance because the outside temperature drops. And at that point, the, uh, the heater is going to turn on. Okay, and the temperature is going to rise. And then at a certain point, the temperature will be high enough and the heater will turn off. And the temperature will start to fall. Okay, and then if it gets below a certain point, the thermostat may tell it to turn on again and then it's going to start rising. So you're going to see this kind of behavior with this controller because you have an on-off actuator. Okay, but in this case you have uh, the sensor, actuator, and controller, and then some disturbances that we talked about in addition to uh, the temperature outside, maybe doors opening, wind, um, and others that you can think of that are going to drive it away from that set point. Okay, let's talk about another example as well. Let's talk about an automobile. So uh, with an automobile, uh, you're trying to perhaps maintain a certain velocity. Okay, and uh, maybe you have a speed set point, a velocity set point of uh, 60 miles per hour or uh, 100 kilometers per hour. Okay, and um, you know, there's going to be things that like hills, wind, or uh, you know, other cars getting in the way that are going to prevent you from going that speed. Um, and so you're going to have uh, a set point, okay, so this is going to be uh, perhaps your set point, and as the car goes up the hill, um, it's going to uh, slow down a little bit if the gas pedal is in the same position, and then the gas pedal, let's just draw that right here, the gas pedal might start increasing, and the velocity of the car would increase, and then maybe you're at the top of the hill, you don't need that much fuel going to your engine to maintain the velocity, so the gas pedal is going to decrease to drop you back down to your set point. Okay, and so this in this case, the uh, actuator, the actuator is the gas pedal, or the amount of flow of fuel going to the engine, and your set point is going to be a speed or velocity set point, and you also have the measurement Okay, this is going to be a sensor, which is going to be measuring the speed of the car. Okay, so in this case, you have a sensor, which is your speedometer, your actuator, which is your gas pedal or fuel flowing to the engine, and then also your controller, which is going to be adjusting the gas pedal or the fuel flowing to the engine uh, based on the difference between the set point for the speed and the actual speed. Okay, so these are some simple examples ones that you may have uh, practical experience with. You're going to have other controllers as well in practice that are going to be uh, for chemical process equipment. Now we we always have uh, two letters for the different um, these different symbols here and the very first letter is the quantity that you're either measuring or controlling. So you have F here, okay that's going to be a flow and then you have the second letter, which is going to uh, indicate 
typically if it's a transmitter or a controller. Now I have a table of those as well um, right down here. Okay, the first letter, here's the uh, some common ones for the first letter right here. And you can see the associated description of those. So if you have A, uh, that's an analyzer. So it's measuring a mole or mass fraction uh, in a gas or liquid. Uh, you can also have concentration there. Those are kind of synonymous, analyzer, or concentration, A or C. Uh, you have also have flow, uh, you know, current, um, level, pressure, resistance, speed, temperature, vibration, or X is just anything else that doesn't fit, miscellaneous. Okay, so that's the very first letter that you see on one of these bubbles, okay, and then you'll often see something like a flow, uh, FT would be like a flow transmitter. Okay, so let's look at the second letter um, in that, and you have uh, these different letters here. Okay, the two common ones um, that you're gonna see are controller and transmitter or transducer. Okay, and you have uh, your controller, element, indicator, motor, switch, again, transmitter, transducer, valve, miscellaneous, or safety device. So those are some common letters. In this class, we're gonna be using mostly C and T. So if we come back up here and look at this again, <clears throat> you can see that this is gonna be a flow transmitter, a pressure transmitter, a pressure controller, a flow controller, and a flow transmitter. Okay, so let's just look at, for example, just this little block right here. So in this case, we have a flow transmitter. It's measuring the flow at that location. And then based on that flow, this controller is going to be adjusting the valve, open or shut, to try to maintain a certain flow set point. So this would be uh, a flow control system that's made up <coughs> of <clears throat> excuse me, of a sensor. Okay, there's our sensor. Here's our actuator. And we also have a controller. So those three elements required for control. Now, we can also have more complicated control schemes as well. This, um, this block right here is a pressure control system. Okay, instead of uh, writing to uh, the a valve directly, this pressure controller is actually sending a set point. Okay, sends a set point to the flow controller. So instead of adjusting the valve directly, this is called a cascade control. So this is the uh, this is the higher level right here. We all sometimes call this the master, and then this would be the uh, slave controller. Mm -hmm. And you have different, these different layers or hierarchies where the pressure controller is sending a signal to the flow controller, and then the flow controller is trying to follow that set point that the pressure controller gives it. Now, you can also have other things like feed-forward elements. Now, these are disturbances that might be affecting the system, but they're not things that we're trying to control directly, but they, they affect us, and we want to try to reject the disturbance before it causes a deviation from our set point. So you see that right here, this is a, a feed forward element. And typically with feed forwards, we just add those to a controller. So this feed forward is measuring the flow right down here, and it sends a signal to this pressure controller to say, hey, I've got more or less coming out of this tank. Um, you're gonna have a change in your pressure soon, so let's make some adjustments right now so we avoid uh, deviating from our desired pressure set point. So there's a, a feed forward control a example of a cascade right here and then also a feed forward element to the uh, the master or the upper layer of that controller. Okay so there's uh, just one example of a control system. So um, we can also express this in a block diagram form. So this is called a block diagram where we have these different elements. Now this in, in this case let's just go ahead and do the uh, the flow control system. Okay where we had the valve right here and we had the flow uh, controller 
and a flow transmitter and the flow transmitter was measuring the flow uh, through this line. So in this case this uh, is a feedback control system and uh, here in block diagram form it shows the flow of the signals. So you have a set point um, let me write that correctly. You have a set point right here in the uh, flow controller, a desired flow that you're trying to achieve in this system. And so this, that's this set point right here. That's your target value. And then uh, you also have your actuator. Now in that case, this is the valve. And then your process is the, uh, the flow line. Okay, the flow line uh, that you're trying to control the, the flow of. Um, and then your controller is often going to be a, uh, in this case, is going to be a, a proportional integral derivative controller. And uh, so we, we just write PID right there. Okay, and then you also have your sensor. This is going to be your flow transmitter. It's going to be sending information. This is going to be the actual flow. And then you're going to measure it with the flow transmitter. It's going to convert it into a digital signal and then you're going to compare. Uh, this plus minus means that the air is going to be your set point minus your process variable or what came from the sensor. So that air right here is just going to be the difference between those two, how far you're off. And that goes into the controller and then uh, the controller um, it outputs a signal to the valve. So right down here it's going to either open or shut the valve and then the valve is going to uh, open or, or close and then that's going to affect uh, how much is flowing through the process. You can also have some things like uh, delays built in um, and that just that just represents that you might have a delay between when you tell the valve to open or you tell the uh, flow to start and when it actually starts flowing. Okay, and then you again then measure the flow, maybe the next second, and then again make an adjustment to the valve. So this flows around in this feedback loop again and again, maybe cycling through every second or so uh, to continually adjust the valve to maintain a certain flow. Now you might have a disturbance as well. And that's indicated by this, this top one that can cause the flow to change. Let's say we have another flow line here. Um, and, and you might be uh, an additional flow coming in. And so if you have that additional flow coming in, you might close the valve a little bit just to, um, to decrease the flow. Uh, or you could have like a pressure upstream or downstream change. So many different kinds of disturbances. I'll just write a pressure uh, change, you know, from something happening, um, and and that would be the uh, I'd actually go over here, a pressure uh, change, maybe a step. Okay, and then you might do something like uh, add a pressure transducer here, and then add a feed forward element to the flow controller. Okay, and if you do that, then there's some additional information that would then come in um, right here. Okay, you would add that in right there for the output of the controller. Okay, so um, here's a block diagram. And for the some of the homework problems, we're going to practice taking uh, this, uh, you know, maybe a, a process description like this, a schematic, and then talking about the flow of information through that control system with a block diagram. Okay, so just some additional terminology that we're going to need for this. Um, when we say actuator, uh, sometimes we say controller output, CO, or just output, OP. And when we're talking about uh, sometimes in advanced control applications, we call that a manipulated variable, the one that we can change to cause some effect to the system. And then when we talk about a controller, we have uh, a set point. And uh, in advanced control, sometimes we just have a set point, or sometimes we have a range, like a set point high 
or a set point low. Uh, range of values that are acceptable uh, to be driven to. Kind of like a thermostat. You know, it will turn on only if it uh, drops below 68, and it'll turn off only if it rises above 70. It kind of has this dead bend. Sensors. Uh, we call that the uh, when you have something measured, it's our process variable, our PV. And we're trying to reduce the difference between the set point and the PV. So that's going to be our error. In uh, con multivariable control or model predictive control, we often call that our uh, controlled variable. That's the one that we're trying to drive to a set point. And then disturbances are going to be uh, signals. Uh, many times as DVs or disturbance uh, variables, and that's the same in both of them. Okay, so just to review what we've covered, uh, we covered a couple examples of a home, a cruise control application, and then uh, talking about uh, you know these schematics. Here are the letters that we'll use to denote different things that we're measuring and different things that we're either transmitting or controlling. Okay, and then uh, we have the block diagram. So we'll create block diagrams, just show the flow of information through this feedback loop. And uh, we talk about a little bit of terminology. So what we'll do is now go on to a couple practice example problems. So if you come to the process dynamics and control course, and then go over to assignments, this is the one that we're covering right here. We just covered the control design. And if you scroll down, you'll see a lot of this information. And then if you look at the assignment, we're next we're going to cover uh, exercise one through four.